Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe Newton's second law of motion and calculate the force required to accelerate an object. You should then be able to estimate speed, acceleration and forces for everyday road transport. And if you're a higher tier student then you should be able to describe what's meant by inertial mass. In the last video we looked at Newton's first law of motion. We saw that if a stationary object experiences a resultant force of zero, then it will remain stationary. And if a moving object experiences a resultant force of zero, then it will continue moving at the same speed and in the same direction. In other words, its velocity will stay the same. However, a resultant force which is not zero will cause an object's velocity to change. So in this video, we're looking at Newton's second law of motion, and here it is. The acceleration of an object is proportional to the resultant force acting on the object and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. And remember that this symbol means proportional. So what does this actually mean? I'm showing you here two objects with equal masses. Both objects are experiencing a resultant force. The top object is experiencing a resultant force of 20 newtons to the right and the bottom object is experiencing resultant force of 10 newtons to the right. Now as we said before, the acceleration of an object is proportional to the resultant force acting on the object. What this means is that if we've got a greater force, then we have a greater acceleration. So this means that the top object will experience twice the acceleration of the bottom object. Okay, this shows another two objects, and both objects are experiencing a resultant force of 20 newtons. The top object has a mass of 1 kilogram, and the bottom object has a mass of 2 kilograms. As we saw before, the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. In other words, if the mass is larger, then the acceleration will be smaller. So once again, the top object will experience twice the acceleration of the bottom object. Now we can use this to calculate the force needed to accelerate an object. We use this equation. The force in newtons equals the mass in kilograms multiplied by the acceleration in meters per second squared. And you are not given this equation in the exam, so you need to learn it. Here's a question for you. Calculate the force needed to accelerate an object with a mass of 5 kilograms by 4 meters per second squared. So pause the video now and try this yourself. Okay, the force equals the mass multiplied by the acceleration. The mass is 5 kilograms and the acceleration is 4 meters per second squared. Putting these into the equation gives us a force required of 20 newtons. Here's another question for you. A force of 50 newtons is applied to an object with a mass of 0.5 kilograms. Calculate the acceleration of the object. So again, pause the video and try this yourself. Okay, in this case we need to calculate the acceleration. Looking at the triangle, we can see that the acceleration is the force divided by the mass. In this case, the force is 50 newtons and the mass is 0.5 kilograms. Putting these into the equation gives us an acceleration of 100 meters per second squared. Okay, now in the exam, you could be asked to estimate the speed, acceleration and forces involved in road transport. So I'm showing you some of those here. Cars travelled around 13 metres per second on a main road in the UK and around 30 metres per second on a motorway. To accelerate from a main road to a motorway involves a typical acceleration of around 2 metres per second squared. For a typical family car, that would require a force of around 2,000 newtons. Now, if you're a foundation tier student, then you can stop watching. However, higher tier students need to keep watching. We're going to look at the idea of inertia. If we look again at Newton's first law, another way of saying it is, an object will stay stationary or continue moving at the same speed and direction unless a resultant force is applied. In other words, objects will stay still or keep the same motion unless you apply a resultant force. Scientists call this property of objects inertia. Now, the inertial mass is a measure of how difficult it is to change the velocity of an object. And the inertial mass is defined as the ratio of the force needed to accelerate an object over the acceleration produced. An object with a large inertial mass will require a larger force to produce a given acceleration than an object with a smaller inertial mass. 
Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on Newton's second law in my Vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.